What is the oldest human dream? What is it, Maestro? Hmm. 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 Hey, Apple! Give me one. Here is what I was looking for. I get it now, Maestro. Your dream? No, no. No, no, that's not the dream. The oldest dream is this. To fly. You're right. Yes, you know the ancient Greeks. Great. We'll hear about the Greeks. Hey, so what? It's just the Greeks. As I was saying... <clears throat> yeah, according to an old story, a legend, Icarus and his father, Daedalus... We'll never find a way out of this labyrinth. What if the Minotaur should come? And yet you're the one who built this maze of passages, Father, the labyrinth. Mm-hmm. I have an idea. Grab all those chickens, quick. these wings will fly away. Be very careful, Icarus. You mustn't fly too high. The sun will melt the wax holding the feathers and you'll crash to earth. Yes, father. Come back! Be careful of the sun! Icarus! Don't fly too close to the sun! <laughs> uh -oh. Dad! Naturally, it's only a legend. But from the beginning of time, man cherished the dream. For instance, in China... And in India... And don't forget, there was Alibaba and his flying carpet. <laughs> ah, the dream to fly. Leonardo da Vinci did more than anyone to realize it. He designed 150 machines, do you realize? 500 drawings to find out that human muscles aren't enough to sustain flight. And children today, we can't appreciate how much imagination he had for his time. Now we have to wait till 1783. That's when flight got started in a big way. And two Frenchmen, the Montgolfier brothers, made a balloon, and they went off in free flight. In 1785, another Frenchman, Blanchard, and an American, Jeffries, will attempt to fly across the English Channel. What an adventure! The balloon is inflated completely. Now we might start. After you. Are you go first, sir. After you, please. Oh, the honor is yours. Please, sir. After uh, no, you. after you. No, after, after you. you. Oh, if you go on like this, your balloon won't go up. Oh. 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 Sorry. Not at all. It is my fault. No, no, no. It was mine. No. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Oh, look there! Stay the head! It is Kelly! Yeah, that's great. Okay, now let's roar. We'll drop. <laughs> oh, oh, We're oh. much too heavy. Mm. I'll drink some. That way, we'll be lighter. My dear sir, that will not make us lighter, perhaps lightheaded. Toss it out. Now, of course, I should have realized. The sandwiches. Ah, uh, oh, oh. One of us ought to jump. Only which one? Whichever is heavier. Uh, I got an idea. 
all our clothes really weigh a lot. Yes, you're right. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I brought a bottle of wine. Toss it overboard. I might just drink it. No, no. Is that all? There is this excellent burgundy. No, no, no question. Oh, go on. Please do. I hear you are a guest in my home. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> go on, if you please. No, no question. Oh, please, you'll be my guest. Well, if you insist. <laughs> oh. Maestro, and the airplane and all that? No, oh, ever since Leonardo, there's been no shortage of fabulous designs for planes. <laughs> yeah, if you want, I'll show you some of them. Uh, there were Father Lana's nacelle, the passerola of Gusmao, a machine by Girard. There were also flying men, like Barqueville, Le Tour, the Hoof. Yeah, and the helicopters. There was Brights, Ponton d'Amerco using a steam engine, uh, badly. Home de la Pose, Castel's model. The middle of the 19th century saw quite a nice collection of largely useless planes. The Landel, the aerial steamer of Thomas Moy, the Achenbach steam machine, the flying ship by the great Thomas Edison. Needless to say, none of these machines ever got off the ground. But we didn't have long to wait. Flight was around the corner. A French engineer, Clément Adair, is studying the flight of bats. Looks pretty dangerous, Monsieur Adair. Bats can do it, so my machine can do it. Let's go. He flew for 50 meters. It's fantastic. Hey! At about the same time in Germany, Otto Lilienthal and his brother Gustav. It is ready. I go. It is always you, Otto. It's not right, brother. I want to glide just once. Come on, just once. Let me go. Yeah, good, Gustav. You go. Time it didn't work. I think I know why it didn't work. Oh, do you? The heavier oh. the pilot, the bigger the wing has to be. That's the oh. answer. The wings are too small for your weight. Now I'm going to try again. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Do you realize this is going to be his 2,000th flight? And each time he goes farther. Yes, the man in flight is a beautiful... Oh! 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 The tragic death of Otto Lilienthal in no way stopped others from testing, but some of them were funny ones. Take Sir Hiram Maxim, who had built an enormous machine with a steam engine. Are you all right, Sir Hiram? Yes, quite. But now I am pessimistic on the future of aviation. In France, Clément Adair carries out another test with unfortunate results. My apologies, Monsieur Adair, but you've made a convincing demonstration that aviation hasn't any future. At about the same time, near Lake Michigan in the United States, an old scientist, Octave Chanute, is trying to get his assistant... Go on! Airborne. 
didn't work. We'll try another. Well, there we are. But the first to get a plane off the ground, the real flyers, they were the Wright brothers. The wings have to be really big because it's their surface that creates lift, remember? Yes, but how are we gonna steer the thing? There, look. Oh, 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 we'll have to learn how birds do it. Be careful, Orville. Don't forget the way Lilienthal ended up. Right, Wilbur. Our motto, safety first. <laughs> oh, oh, as I always say, <laughs> our motto, safety first. Let's get advice from Chanute. The expert, that's him. <laughs> Sir, my name is Wilbur Wright. I'm Orville Wright. We have a bicycle shop. But now we want to fly. Huh? We wondered, wondered if, if you'd give, give us some help. Help? Uh, help? Uh, where did you get the idea of flying instead of pedaling? Well, sir, this is just how it happened. It goes back more than 20 years. It was at Christmas. Our father, Reverend Milton Wright, gave us a wonderful toy, a sort of helicopter. <laughs> Look, it really flies! Wow! That was it. Now it seems flying's all that counts. Right. And we got really excited by what Lilienthal did. That's true. We read your book, Progress in <laughs> Flying Machines. And so here we are. All right. To begin with, try to understand the way air keeps this paper glider up for a time. Then do your calculations. But then go on flying, flying, and coming back to Earth till you understand all that Lilienthal has said. I have a little gift for you. Oh. It's an anemometer for accurately measuring wind speed. We appreciate it. Come back and see me whenever you like. Orville, come help me. Mm hmm? Next week, I think we're gonna try a little test. Excellent, a steady wind of 15 kilometers an hour. Conditions are ideal. <laughs> Heads or tails? Heads. Ha. Heads, your turn. It's working, yes, it works! Oh. Uh. Well, go on, tell me why you're so discouraged. I think that no man will fly for another thousand years. And you'd abandon, just give up, all because of one or two bad landings. Come on, your young fellows, remember what Lilienthal said. Fly and then fall, and by so doing, learn to fall no more. The trouble is, we can't figure out a way to steer it. Very well, if you want to steer a craft, think for a second. You need a what? Well, we need a sort of rudder. There you are. Seek and ye shall find. Yes, only the wings can't carry the weight of a man. Is it so? And so we have to make them larger. Or we might change their shape. Well, there you are. He's right. We have to think about each problem. We still have to be careful. At all times, keep an eye on where we're going. <laughs> oh. That's great. It's oh. working. Now, let's go to lunch. <laughs> and you make this thing work. Ah.
You see, rounding the leading edge increases the wing's lift. It's all a question of airflow. Our wings are flexible with a wire they're linked up to the controls, so we can bend them. And at the same time, we'll tilt the tail aileron. Yes. Mr. Augustus, my assistant, he's very eager to watch your flight. We're ready to demonstrate. Heads or tails? I'll take heads. Oh, heads, it's your turn. <laughs> Yay! Fantastic! He flew for 26 seconds at distance of nearly 200 meters. Bravo! Congratulations, boys! Bravo! Congratulations! Your controls influence the wings in flight, and you're using your tail aileron as a rudder. Good work. Now all you need is some sort of engine to propel the craft. Some sort of engine. Uh, that's right. And if I'm not mistaken, a Frenchman, Captain Faber, is working on one. I was forgetting Professor Langley. Ah, yes. Apparently, he's already carried out some tests. You know, we're kind of working on one. Really? You mean a gasoline engine? See, all our calculations are here. Huh? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It runs! Wilbur! 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 Langley, he crashed! I'm sorry. How did it happen? Tell me, go on. He crashed just one week ago. He'd built a sort of platform on the Potomac. It was a four-place biplane with two propeller gasoline engines. And right after takeoff... Well, it doesn't mean we're gonna stop. Heads or tails? Heads. Oh. Heads, this time you're lucky. It's my turn now, Orville. Uh. 56 seconds, 57, 59, almost a minute. You flew 260 meters, we've done it. Oh, this passed nearly unnoticed, and it was a great event in history. Man had truly flown and for the first time. And very soon, the Wright brothers were to do even better. In September 1904, they flew over 1,240 oh. meters, and this time they had full control of the plane. We did it! We did it! Too bad not one reporter thought it was important enough to come and witness it for himself and write the story. Nobody cared about those ridiculous flights. No, no, Mr. Wright, your invention is of no interest. The Army doesn't want it. A machine that flies. The Army doesn't believe it will ever be of any use. They're a bit of a joke, these Wright brothers, eh, what? Aimlessly making circles in the air, really, I say. Flying more than a kilometer, but they must be exaggerating, yes? Oh, what does it matter for? I tell you, their aviation has no future. You can believe what I say. Oh, yes, as with all great new inventions, nobody had any trust in it. But in truth, with the Wright brothers, the age of aviation had really begun once and for all. In Europe, they were still playing with kites. Lavanzari managed a few meters. Sullivan ended up in the water. Gabriel Voisin did a little better flying a few meters. And as for Archdeacon's glider, it was, well, powered by a Renault engine, you might say. Meanwhile, back in the United States. Thirty-seven minutes, thirty-seven kilometers. Thirty-eight minutes, thirty-eight kilometers. We're gonna show them whether we can fly. Go on! I don't believe the Wright brothers did everything they claim they did. What do you think, Farmer? I share exactly your opinion. When I imagine our difficult it is to remain in the air for a few minutes. I may assure you, you're wrong, monsieur. It's a fact, as they claim the Wrights are flying very well. If you've any doubt, why don't you organize a little contest? Is that the machine you were flying? Yep, that's it. And I'm gonna win. Then they'll all have to believe us. Get your Wilbur Norville Wright caps, Wright Brothers caps. The first competition, one complete lap, all right? Uh, you won't make it, no way. You see those trees there? Well, they're much too high, you'll hit them. Oh, 
the endurance test. We'll time how long you can remain in the air. minutes and 30 seconds, he has beaten your record, Blériot. He's been up for half an hour, a fantastic flight. Hooray! 39 minutes. It is a new era in aviation that's opened up. Uh, Mr. Wright, would you mind? Mrs. Berg would like a ride. I know she'd so much enjoy it. Mm. It'd be my pleasure, ma'am. Mm. Oh. It was quite breathtaking. Huh? Oh, she walks so daily. Yes, what a fine figure she has. Small steps are so very elegant. Hobble skirts, latest fashion. Skirts, very latest creations. Exclusive. Perfect. Buy now, right ladies, aviation airplanes. skirts. And so man had learned to fly in just a few years' time. And then in the year 1909, Paper, Daily Mail awards 6,000 pound prize for the first to fly across the English Channel. 6,000 pounds sterling was a fortune. It's magnificent. I know you are going to win it. This one is superb. Oh, I know that it will win. Best of luck. The Antoinette here is tried and true, Monsieur Latham. You're sure to win. That's my intention, Mr. Levasseur. Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I crashed your aeroplane. It's not your fault. It was a gust of wind. Your Wright's machine is damaged. Bad luck. It is an outstanding machine. And Latham? Well, he just took off. This England, there's too much fog. There is land. The wind blew me off course, yes. Mr. Blerio, uh, anything to declare? I take it you are a reporter from the paper? Uh, no, sir, agent for the customs. The year of the great pioneers would soon be over. Aviation would become a reality. The First World War would soon demonstrate how real it was, and progress took its course. 1921, a woman, Adrienne Bolland, flies over the Andes Mountains in South America. 1927, Charles Lindbergh crosses the Atlantic solo. 1949, the first jetliner goes into service, the British Comet. Now, in our time, Flying around is something we take for granted, a matter of a routine. Yes, but when you think about it, just a century ago, we didn't know how to get off the ground. <laughs> 